Laura Spence and welcome to Science Rocks. I'm at the Future of Education Technology Conference. Every year we come here to show you some of the greatest trends in technology and the focus of this year is 21st century skills and tech tools. With more than 8,000 educators and technology experts from 40 countries attending this year, FETC is one of the biggest educational technology conferences in the country. There are more than 300 concurrent sessions that are conducted by educational technology experts from around the country. One of the top STEM trends this year is virtual reality, and this is a session conducted by a team of professors from NC State. So virtual reality, in my mind, is so exciting and so new, it immediately captures students' interest, understanding, and motivation. Uh, it helps us with teaching science, but it's also valuable in teaching mathematics, particularly things like geometry. There's many pluses to a virtual environment, and the students' voices have told us perhaps best what these are. For example, students are very concerned about breaking equipment or about safety or creating a fire or electrocuting themselves if they're doing circuits. So the virtual system allows them to do lab experiments safely without actually having to worry about issues related to safety or about uh, destroying the materials that they're working with. Um, so those are some of the advantages. They also are able to explore science in ways that we've never been able to explore science by going inside of the human body or going inside of the heart and seeing how the, how the valves open and close. The vendor hall is also a great place to see some of the latest educational tools in action and a team of educators from Bel Air Elementary in Clearwater are here, led by their principal, Tabitha Griffin. Tabitha, why is it so important for you to be here at FETC? Well, this is my second year at FETC, and I think it's important that we attend the uh, professional development that is offered so that we can continue to learn and grow and find out about the new and innovating techniques that are out there so that we can bring that back to our staff and continue to move our students forward into the 21st century. Now, you didn't just come alone. You brought a crew with you. Why did you bring a whole group of educators from your school? Well, I think it's important that not only the instructional leader learns, but also the support people around because one person does not move a school. It takes all of us working together as a team to take that enthusiasm and excitement back into the building and then extend it out to the others. I think it's important to be at FETC because the world is changing. These students that we see in our classes every day, they are working with technology at home and we just want to show them the right way to utilize the tools and to show them that it can be used for education rather than just for play. I think it's important for me to be here so that I can work with the teachers too in collaboration in the media center with all the new technology to help them, to support them and help them to reach the students with everything new that's coming down the pike. As a classroom teacher, what impact does this conference have on you? This has tremendous impact for me. I teach at a Title I school with an enormous minority population. Technology crosses language barriers and gender barriers. So this gives us an opportunity to connect learning to modern technology, to females so we can get more women in STEM and in STEAM, and also crosses language barriers so we can take English speakers of other languages and bring them into the 21st century, not just by speaking English, but by speaking technology. This is ideal. Nope. With a 3D printer, your students can design this car, and then they can actually take it and then apply it to what we learn in science. One of the biggest ways we see student engagement with science and STEM is through robotics, and they are big here on the vendor floor. The Bel Air Elementary team stops by one of our STEM suppliers, Pitsco Education. And while the full-size robot gets everyone's attention, Alan Kirby tells us more about Pitsco's newest educational tool. So Alan, behind us we use some of your products, but you're holding something really interesting in your hand. Tell us about it. This is awesome, Laura. This is our brand new Tetrix Prism uh, motor controller. It's an Arduino-based microcontroller that can control up to eight RC servos, uh, two motors, two encoded motors, uh, and a whole host of digital, analog, and I2C sensor ports. Now why is it so important that Pitsco have a presence at this conference? 
This, uh, we use this conference as kind of the barometer for the year. Not only is it an outstanding show for Florida, the neighboring states and, and territories, but it gives us a, a good feel for the way technology is headed in education. And we have a principal and all her educators here at the FETC conference and looking at the products that you have in your booth, where should teachers begin when they're thinking about STEM and implementing it into their school? Absolutely. I would look for resources first. Uh, we've hosted a few webinars from TAG teachers, our teacher advisory group. Uh, those TAG teachers really help um, guide and shape what Makerspace means to them. And a lot of implementations can be studied and examined and, 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 and calculated on to to help them build their specific program. And now there's one more thing coming with Pitsco, and that's happening on Friday. Talk about that. Yeah, this is the most exciting part of the week. <laughs> uh, Friday, we're going to be building and programming uh, some test bed work uh, robots in a three hour long workshop over in the Hyatt. We will be highlighting the new prison controller. We will be, uh, again, building and programming with it. So, and uh, Laura will be my guest speaker. That's why it's exciting. <laughs> We'll have more from Pitsco and FETC in a moment. But you know, down the road from Orlando is the nation's space coast, the home of NASA, our country's rocket program. Some of our Pinellas County students are getting involved with rocketry, as well as Four, Palm Harbor three, Middle School. Two, Let's check five. it out. So you have such an amazing club here. Tell us what you're doing. Well, we, <clears throat> I want to inspire the next generation of astronauts. It's time to go back to the moon. It's time to get back into space. So I've got to plant the seed of, of, the, of the thrill, the rush of, of, of going back into space. So it has to start here in middle school and, and not the fear. I'll tell you to do this. I'll hook up one lead, you hook up the other. One lead is positive, one lead is negative. We respect the rocket motor, the, the propellant in there. And, I teach the kids the skills to prep the rockets for flight and because we can send all the astronauts we want into space but we can't bring them back in one piece what's the point so it's all about they have to learn the recovery which is very important so I just want to fuel the passion for 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 science for rocketry and to think what they want to do in the future there's one you do the other side you have to learn to do that what I look for is dedication devotion that they're gonna stick with this program from August through May Okay, so there will always be some kids that want to sign up just to be popular and, and join, but, but this core kids here in, in January, they've been doing this and they're dedicated and they like learning, the power, and, and, they, and the stick with itness. That's the key thing, sticking with something to the end. We're witnessing some rockets be launched by our captain, Mr. Mac, and they go, depending on the motor, about 50 feet to a thousand feet in the air. Now this is such a unique club to Pinellas County Schools. For students that want to get involved, what advice would you give them? Um, if you're going to be at this school, you want to join because Mr. Mack is a great influence on the students. He is a great sixth grade teacher. He teaches world history and he is the best teacher I've ever had. One, ignition. Yes! Great one! Bad igniter. So I had Mr. Mack as my history teacher three long years ago as uh, my first year in Palm Harbor. And he was telling me about it. And I saw it on board, I was like, that sounds fun. Cause I've been flying since I was little, like airplanes with my dad and I, you know. So I thought, sounds fun, let's do it. And I got into flying and I've been flying ever since. That's great. So for, we're about to have a launch behind us. Yep. And for females that are interested in getting involved in rocketry, what advice would you give them? Don't be scared to be ahead of the guys. I know it's intimidating that there's all these people here and you're one of the few girls there, but don't be scared. We're all family here. It's it's just a, fa a very friendly hobby. Okay, don't let it touch hook them up. Because it'll short. So explain to us some of the components of rocketry. So aerodynamics is one of the very important things of rocketry. So this is an Alpha 3. This is one of my first rockets I owned. When you have a fin hanging out this way, do you think it's gonna work very well? No. Three, two, one, ignition. One, two, three. Don't hit the track. Oh, 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 oh. Impressive. We call that road rash. It's not the end of the world. A little sandpaper, splash of paint, that's it. So you do. Yeah. All right. It's exciting because you never know what's going to happen to the rocket. And what? 
What's your recovery system on them? You catch them if they have a parachute in them, or they could have a streamer, or you not want to catch it because it's coming very fast down. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you got it! <laughs> and so I want these kids passing on to skills how to build one step at a time. It may look daunting at first, but if you keep moving forward, you never fall behind. Science Rocks rolls on in a moment.